Okay, welcome back, Mr. Norgren here. Our third lesson is titled Creating an Identity Part 3, and you will learn how to create your own shapes as well as use and modify Photoshop's custom shapes. Don't forget to write down and define the following in your sketchbooks. Today we have shape and grid. And then Photoshop's live shape and Photoshop's custom shape. All right, let's get started. Okay, so hopefully you remember what a shape is from preschool. Start off by opening Photoshop, mine's already open, and then choose File New from the menu bar or choose the keyboard shortcut Command N. For the width and height, you're gonna do five inches. And for the resolution, you'll do 300 and then click OK. On the menu bar, click on View, Show. Oh, my grid is already showing. I was just going to show you how to do that. Let me get rid of that for now. Choose View, Show, and then over to Grid. And the keyboard shortcut is much easier. It's Command Apostrophe to show and hide the grid. That's Command Apostrophe. And now click on the rectangular marquee tool in the toolbar, or press the letter M. And then, actually, I want to show my grid here. Press the letter M and then click and drag a perfect square. Nope, that's a circle. Let me Command Z that. Uh, you could press Shift M to toggle to the correct tool. So Shift M will toggle through those two tools. So I want the square one. So I'll click and drag a perfect square using my guidelines here, my grid. You could also hold down the Shift key to make sure that it's perfect. You may remember from the last lesson that you could add to your selection by holding down the shift key and subtract from it by holding down the option key. So if I wanted to add a little square to the top here, I could hold down shift and make that a little bit bigger. And if I wanted to cut a little circle out here, I could change to the elliptical marquee tool and then hold down option and click and drag a little circle here. Photoshop has a cool function here too with the uh, guidelines. It's showing me that I've got a perfect circle there. And let's see if I can get it perfect there too. Uh, right there, there we go. See those pink lines that popped up? So now I've got the perfect placement of that too. Okay, next step, once you have an interesting shape, click on your new layer, new layer icon in the layers palette at the bottom over here. And then fill with black. If your black is your foreground color, uh, you could press Option Delete. If it's a different color, let's say I have a different color up here and black is not the foreground, you could press, press the letter D and then press Option Delete to fill in with that uh, black foreground color. So now go ahead and deselect Command D and then save this. You're going to save this into your Video Lessons folder that's in your Documents. So go to your Video Lessons and then you're going to call this one Last Name VL3, and then click Save. Okay, next you're going to hide the grid, the Command apostrophe, and you're also going to press Command T to apply a few transformations. So if you remember, you could right click inside here, you could uh, flip it horizontal, which will do nothing. You could perspective, you could distort, uh, whatever you want to do to transform it any way you want to. Once you have your transformations, go ahead and press return, and then you're going to go on to the next shape. So hide this grid. Uh, we already hid the grid. Go ahead and hide this layer, and then create a new layer, and bring up the grid again. So I'll make a new layer, and if you don't remember what the uh, grid shortcut is, I recommend you paying attention. Or better yet, you could write these down in your sketchbook because if you start to memorize shortcuts, uh, you will end up making twice as much money someday because you'll work twice as fast. Okay, next you're gonna choose the polygonal lasso tool from the toolbar. It's the letter L. You could also hold down Shift L to toggle between the few tools that are in there and you want the one that looks like this. And then next you're going to uh, make an interesting shape on your canvas here. So I'll go ahead and click on my first point and then drag down to my second point. And then I'm gonna drag over. And it looks like I missed the perfect spot right there, but I'll just go here. And that's what the guidelines are for here. You could uh, make it nicely precise and measured. 
any way you want and then come down here and then go back to the first point that you started with and you'll see a little circle get attached to your lasso tool. If you can't find the beginning point, sometimes it gets very frustrating because you've got this leash stuck on you. So you could always uh, double click and then start again. So I'll deselect that and then try that again real quick. So start up here, point A and then B and missed it again, C. Another thing you could do is turn on snapping to make sure that it snaps to these guidelines, which is helpful too. That is up here under the view menu and go to snap. So let's go ahead and try that a third time. Practice is perfect. So come over here, see if the snapping works a little bit better. And it looks like it's snapping to that line a little bit better. There we go. I like that better. And come down here and then back to the beginning. So now I've got a little stylized M looking shape. I've got my new layer here. Remember to fill this in with the uh, keyboard shortcut. It is option delete. We'll fill with that foreground color. And now you can press command D to deselect. Okay, this next step is pretty cool. You could use the keyboard shortcut to choose the move tool. Do you remember that one? It's the letter V. And then hold down the option key and click and drag on your canvas. And you could uh, move an, a copy over. So you could see over the layers palette, we've made an extra copy. Now, if you want to copy these two, there's another cool thing you could do. Hold down the command key and select this other layer or choose the other layer. So you've got two layers activated. Get the move tool again, hold down option and click and drag. And you now you've got uh, some more shapes. You could also press command T right click and you could flip that too so oops i don't want a horizontal flip it vertical so now you've got a cool little pattern shape there and then press return okay now what you're going to do is uh, merge all these four shapes together so go ahead and hide the background layer you'll now see that these four layers are active and they're visible so up in the top right corner of the layers palette you can click on these three little lines and go down to Merge Visible. That'll put them all into one layer. So now we've got the two different layers here at your two different shapes. Okay, uh, now what you're gonna do is make an organic shape. These last two shapes are considered geometric because they are precise and they are measured. Organic shapes are a little more free flowing. So go ahead and bring up your uh, background again, make a new layer, and then choose the uh, lasso tool that's just the freeform lasso tool and you could press uh, shift l to toggle between those and this is the one you want it to look like go ahead and draw some kind of freeform shape and if you notice it's kind of making jaggy lines that's not what we want so command d select that and guess what we need to do yep click on view and go down to snap and now when I draw this shape, it'll be nice and free flow form shape and I can draw whatever I want. As a little review, if you wanted to add to that shape with the lasso tool, hold down shift and click and drag a little circle to add to it. If you want to subtract, you could hold down option and uh, cut out some little holes here. Actually, that looks like a little face there. So you could cut out a bunch of little spots or something. And then to fill this in with black the foreground color, a shortcut for that is option delete. And then deselect is command D. Okay, uh, next step that you're going to do for the last part of this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop's live shapes and custom shapes. So let's start off by choosing the rounded rectangle tool. That's uh, the letter U. And if I go shift U, it'll toggle to the rounded one. If I move my mouse right over there and leave it there for a second, it tells me what the tool is. So I've got that tool. Let's go ahead and hide this uh, layer here. And with this type of shape tool, I don't need to create a new layer because it's going to make a shape layer for me. So up at the top here, make sure it says shape up at the top and then uh, click and drag a rounded rectangle. And as soon as I let go, you'll see the properties box will pop up. And here's where we could adjust a few things. First thing I want to check is this little uh, link right here, a little chain link. I could lock all those together. And now if I click and drag right here on one of these uh, icons for the corners, 
you could see that it changes the roundness of that rectangle. If you want to just change one side, what you could do is unclick that, and then you could adjust, adjust one side and make a nice little custom shape there. Okay, so after you adjust these uh, corners, you could collapse this palette by clicking here. And then you could choose the elliptical marquee tool right up here, letter M, and click and drag a circle in here. If you wanted to cut a circle out of there, you can. Go ahead and press delete, and you're going to get a little warning here. This is going to tell you you cannot edit it because it's a shape layer. And shape layers are similar to type layers. What you have to do is rasterize it first. So right click on the word rounded rectangle and go up to rasterize layer. And this turns it into a normal pixel layer that you can now press delete to cut that out. Press command D to deselect and you're all set. Okay, if you want to try to change the properties now, clicking on the properties here, you won't be able to because there are no properties because it's just pixels now. Okay, hide this layer and toggle to the custom shape tool. Shift U will toggle me to that and it looks like this one right down here in the toolbar. And then what you're going to do is keep all these settings the same up at the top. One that you're going to change is right up here where you get this little down arrow and you can see all the different shapes. Uh, go ahead and now click on this little wheel up in the top right and choose all and then click OK and that'll load all of Photoshop shapes that are available right now. You can also find shapes online and uh, load them into your version of Photoshop. Okay, uh, so what I want you to do for now is to select the flower seven shape. It's this one right here. Hold my mouse there and it tells me it's the flower seven. And then to get rid of this menu, you can either click on this little arrow again or press the return key. And now click and drag a little flower shape. And you remember uh, hearing about balance in the last video? We learned about symmetrical and asymmetrical balance. And this shape has another type of balance called radial balance, very similar to spokes on a wheel. Okay, now choose the move tool, letter V on the keyboard. And then move this around a little bit and you could do whatever kind of adjustments you want to do to this. You could press command T uh, to transform it and do all these transformations. You could also get one of the marquee tools and let's say you wanted to make this circle a little bit bigger. Cut that out. I could hold down shift to make it a perfect circle. And if I'm not in the right spot, I can now click inside of this selection, move it around a little bit. And then I could press uh, delete. Or I could use the little arrow keys to nudge it around a little bit to try to get it where exactly where I want it. And then press delete. Oops, guess what I forgot to do? Click OK. Right click on the word shape one. And then go to rasterize layer. And then press delete. You can now press command D to deselect. And then command S to save again. And you are all finished with this lesson. Good job. All right, well done. You've learned the art element of shape and how to use Photoshop's grid. You've also learned how to use the live shape and custom shape in Photoshop. Once again, I encourage you to always be present, professional, and polite in all your future business encounters. And we have another slideshow that will illustrate how you could use the art element of shape in your photography. Thanks and have a great day.